What's going on, Bulls Nation? And welcome into the CHGO Bulls Podcast, presented to you by PointsBet. Don't forget that promo code CHGO when you sign up to live your bet life. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. Uh, the GOAT is hopping on a plane to come back from Vegas as we speak. Big Dave is off today, but join me in studio. Give it up, everybody, for the one, the only, Rick Camp on Twitter at Rick C. Camp. You know him from his many years of producing and broadcasting for Chicago Sports Radio here in Chicago, uh, as well as this past season doing pre- and post-game content for the Chicago Bulls on 670 The Score. Also co-host and co-creator of the very popular I'm Fat podcast with our Blackhawks guy, Jay Zawoski. Yes, and uh, very much live up to the billing, too. Hey, so- welcome in. Happy to have you here, man. Um, let's, you know, first and foremost, how are things? How's your summer going? Uh, it's, you know, had more free time than I anticipated, which is, you know, <laughs> definitely a thing. Yeah. Thanks, Odyssey. Yeah. Uh, so, but hey, I've, I've taken the time to really kind of grind in on some Bulls content, NBA content. And as the landscapes changed and then, or not changed as we're waiting for Kevin Durant trades now. Right. Please, can we get that done? I don't think we are anytime soon. It doesn't feel like, like it's coming anytime soon, does no, it? No, no. But, well, I mean, when apparently you're trying to start negotiations with Carl Towns, Anthony Edwards, and all the picks. Right. Might take a hot minute. Yeah, no kidding. Once <laughs> once everybody saw that haul for Rudy Gobert, people were going to be like, people basically yeah. said, oh, this, this KD trade, if it happens, is going to be way more complicated. That is not an easy trade to work out. No, it screwed the market. It totally screwed the market because now, almost no matter what you get for Kevin Durant, it's not going to feel like enough because of what Rudy Gobert went for. Right, exactly. Um, but again, if any of you aren't familiar with Rick's work, he is incre- incredible when it comes to analyzing these Chicago Bulls that we all know and love and follow every day. Follow him on Twitter to get his Bulls takes at Rick C. Camp. Again, Um before we get into what the Bulls have been doing with the draft, with free agency, the offseason, and this weird stuff about Goran Dragic that dropped via a Serbian newspaper earlier this morning, we're going to get into all that. Yeah. First, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about your Bulls fandom and how it came about. Is there a, is there like a youth memory from way back in your younger years where you recall becoming a Bulls fan? Was there a specific game, a specific moment? that like begin, begins your timeline in your life as being a Bulls fan? 92 finals game one. Yeah. That's the shrug. One, yep. The That's shrug. honestly one of my first memories as well. Yeah. Because it was, I remember sitting in the living room with my mom and dad, uh, my littlest brother, my little brother who at that point was like one and a half or something, just been put to bed. We're watching the game and I kind of like, I knew my dad cared about sports, but I didn't really know what was going on too much. I was like, Five and change at that point yeah so my dad who doesn't who's not normal he's 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 not you and dave right when it comes to watching each individual game <laughs> when jordan hits the six three and he loses it i'm sitting with my mom kind of scared me initially but then i was also like this is something i should remember this is important yeah and from that moment on like basketball became my first love as as a sport like it it always has been ever since then and that starts with the bulls and has expanded to the entire league and i i just can't get i can't get enough of it i've watched way too much crappy summer league basketball year in and year out that's what we do this time of year rick Yes. Well, at least you can maybe do it while you're still buzzed or something coming, <laughs> going from whatever bar or casino. No, man. Or God knows. For, for that ugly Bulls Knicks summer league game this past Sunday, I was just still hungover, dehydrated and watching that crap. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I bailed on that one right quick. I don't blame you. It yeah. was terrible. Yeah. Uh, so the, like, okay. Halfway through the first three Pete is when as, as a younger, uh, a younger person, you really uh, blossomed into your Bulls fandom. Yeah. Do you have a favorite year from those dynasty years? Was it 92, 93, one of the the second 3P years? Is there like a favorite team with a with a specific reason why it was your favorite team? I think 93 because it was my first entire season truly getting it, mm-hmm. or at least to the point that like a 6 or 7 year old can get it. Right, yeah. You know, just like truly caring about the team and that what that might have been the best team of the six could have been like it very well could have been the best team of the six so you had early jordan where it wasn't as much just relying on 
skill set. It was also just the sheer athleticism along with it too. Mm-hmm. I always loved Horace. So oh. having Horace and by that ninety two ninety three season, Horace and Scotty were like legit studs. Yes, exactly. So that was that was probably my favorite of all the title years, at least. Yeah, I mean, I I get you. I just I hate how it ended. You know, yeah. other than the fact that it ended with another title and, sure. and clinching the three peat. Yeah. It's just, you know, well, I guess that's not that's not fair. I didn't have an issue with John Paxson when he was the hero of mm-hmm. game six in Phoenix. Right. It's just that everything that's transpired after that, there's just like a little bit of a sore taste. And it's like, yeah, is that even the same guy anymore in the eyes of Bulls fans? Yeah, that that absolutely. And then even just like then seeing Horace in Orlando and oh. what happened in that series. And while completely understandable, doesn't make it great. Yeah. It doesn't make it any less crappy. Yeah. So that was, yeah, just <laughs> Horace in the Orlando Jersey, being able to do what he did. Oh. It, it's not like it was like, DJ. and his teammates hoisting him up on their shoulders, right. winning that game at the UC. Right. It's terrible. It's not like it was BJ in game one with Charlotte where it's right. like, that's adorable. Right. You had your yeah. moment, <laughs> but cool. We got you. Now here's a bunch of L's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so favorite player from the dynasty years, is it MJ or was it, or, or are you a Scotty guy? I know bulls fans, you know, it's, it's not always the default. Yeah. Obviously MJ answer for every bulls fan. Yeah, it was yeah. like, if I'm, yeah. It was him. I'm not going to favorite, over, not gonna favorite role him. player on the dynasty teams and of any of the six dynasty rosters favorite role player. Uh, I, well, just because of working with him, I have to say Bill Wennington. Yes. That is a fantastic answer, but also, but you know, like Bill Wennington, Horace Grant. Yeah. So, and yes, Jason, I am in studio. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves Rick can in studio. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've always loved Horace too. Yeah. Uh, I like, I was obsessed with the rec specs and yep. when I was a kid, I like my eyesight, eyesight started to go really early on. Like, I think I needed glasses starting in like third or fourth grade Same here. and I was obsessed with the bulls. So I was like, and I couldn't quite figure out the whole contacts thing yet. I was too right. young. They freaked me out. I didn't like touch my eyes. Mm-hmm. And so when I was on the basketball court or the yeah. soccer field, I was wearing the goggles like Horace. See, I wanted to, and it, I had to like wear my parents down because like I started catching when I was playing baseball. Yeah, which shouldn't surprise that many people. But <laughs> I was a catcher too. Yeah, there we go. But like that was so I was like, well, you know, the dust is going to be getting up in there. Regular glasses aren't going to work; they could break. But then it was like, get me those rec specs. And then when I had those, I was like, these are trash for yeah. catching. <laughs> so then, thankfully, my catching career ended shortly after that. Because while I could block <laughs> the ball, I couldn't really do much else. So they're like, hey, first base, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. The, you know, that's it's nice and safe. Just stay in yeah. this one spot oh, all I, the time. I love first base. First base is fantastic. Yeah. Like, that was my favorite. Um, uh, you, we, and you, since you are no longer with Odyssey, I feel like yeah. you, you, we, we can always use ringers for our CHGO softball team. Oh, I'm we're, not we're I struggling through our first season. I have not, I haven't played and I don't even know how long. Oh, me neither since this. And, uh, I've, uh, I've pulled my quad twice <laughs> oh, in nice. a total of playing in three games so yeah. far. So I'm trying you know. to think of the last time I really ran. Yeah. Like that's, it's legitimately, I have to think about it. Yeah. And, and I went and like shot around yesterday. Like, okay, so like, what do you what, when you go and shoot around? Yeah, what are your spots on the floor? Okay, so I'm definitely like a like an elbow, you know, twelve yeah. to fifteen foot jumper kind of guy. Yep. And then and then top of the key three pointers. Okay. I what I never do because I'm awful at them is is corner threes. Corners. I I for whatever reason corner threes have never been my jam. I can't figure it yeah. out. The depth perception's all weird. I suck at it. What yep. about you? The elbows like that yeah. that's pretty much it like i would see like chris weber with the kings oh yeah in the early 2000s still pissed that team never beat the lakers <sighs> rigged like, that was that was my thing like when i would play when i was back at niu and i would i literally balanced my schedule i loaded it monday wednesday friday so i could just spend tuesday and thursday at the wreck yeah like just playing out playing for hours right i wasn't ever good <laughs> but like it's one of those where that's how I get my cardio. Yeah, yeah. Because running for the sake of running is trash. Oh my god, hate it. Yeah, I've only done it for very short stretches in in my adult life, mm-hmm. not currently. Yeah, because 
it's the worst. Yeah. It's the absolute worst. I hate just running to run. Yeah. The, I, you, give me a ball. I need a ball. Exactly. I need a purpose yeah. other than you're going to like, lo- you might lose weight from it. Right. Great. Who cares about that? Cool. <laughs> Clearly not me. No. So, yeah. But and I think I'm a pretty decent passer. Yeah. So, and I like kind of see the court fairly well. So I always thought about those offenses. Right. And, like there were times where some of the members of the basketball team would be there just to mess around and whatever. So right. like if you need someone to get a rebound and get it to the more talented people, right. You need someone to throw a pass or set a back pick. Yeah. I'm your guy, dude. And, and I wasn't this big back then <laughs> either. Like this is, this has been a much more since leaving college and really, you know, yeah. the, the radio and media industry was generally a lot of free food or sitting around a lot. That's true. So you know, see, I, I was about that size when yeah. I was a kid playing basketball. Okay. And then I just, I like mass has always been the same. It's just how it's been distributed. Yes. Yep. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, uh, you know, um, Charles, the, you know, the mound of rebound. Yep. I, I was like, yeah, I can rock with that. I can rock with that. Um, okay. Favorite player post dynasty years. Like actual favorite or ironic favorite? Both. Ironic. I want both of those answers. Okay. Ironic favorite is Cornell David. Okay. Wow. Explain yourself. Um, I didn't see many players wearing 18, so I thought that was different. Okay. He kind of had like a bit of the mop top thing going on. And I, I think it was Tracy McGrady ended his life at one point. Mm-hmm. I really like Tracy McGrady. So I yeah, T-Mac ended that. a lot of lives back yes, in his did. heyday. <laughs> oh, he did. Um, And then actual... I was always a sucker for Luol. Luol? Yeah. Just, Luol, I mean, dangerous it, dang. Yeah. I mean, he's someone that I, even I would get worried if he had to dribble more than twice. Yeah. But, you know, outside of that, just but the, the defense he was able his to His two provide. dribble kind of like run up through the lane and his little floaters, his little hang shots in the lane. Yep. Beautiful to watch. Yes. So, he, yeah, he was always my guy. You know, Derek obviously got all the love. Joe Keem's your boy. He got a bunch of love. Those three guys you just mentioned spent the last this past weekend hanging out in Brazil at Joe's wedding. Yeah. I mean, talk about nostalgia. Even so to, to piggyback on your conversation from yesterday. Yeah. Even me during the ceremony and until people until we get through the old people portion of the music for dancing. Yeah. Shirt stays tucked in. Shirt stays tucked in. Okay. I'm glad. Then, we're getting a larger pool of people's yes. input on this well, very important me, topic. Now, now the tie is totally different. Yeah. If I even wear a tie, which I love <laughs> you if I'm wearing a tie to your wedding. Yeah. Believe me. But So do it, you rock the just, you know, like collared shirt, yep. jacket, dress pants, but just no tie look? Yeah. It's a good look. Yes. It's also great for fats <laughs> because <laughs> at that point, you're having one less thing to constrict. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I, and I just got, this is a big thing that like anybody who's an actual adult out there is probably like, yeah, you moron, but like got my first tailored suit. Yeah. And I'm like, I look less terrible like this. Imagine having right. clothes that are made to fit you. Right. I don't think I've ever, I mean, like I've had a suit altered yeah. to fit me more accurately after buying it off the rack. I mean, but I think that's pretty I much what it was. I'm, I, I don't, yeah. I don't have the the class or the cash to be like, oh yeah, I got a tailor. You know, I got, I got a suit no, guy. It, it was like, well, what was it? I mean, they're not getting, you know, they're not getting the sponsorship here. But you know, I think it was like a men's warehouse or okay. whatever. So it was basically, here's the thing off the rack, and we'll work with it. But you're saying you did, in fact, like the way you looked. I would say I was less bad looking. Yes. So they guaranteed it, and they and they followed through. Yes, they did. Good. I mean, I, I've always trusted that line from Men's mm-hmm. Warehouse since yep. I saw those commercials when I was like, you know, eight years old. Right. However, in all of those years, my friends and or family members' weddings, only reason I've ever needed to own a suit. Yep. And I own one suit and one navy blazer, and that's it. Yeah, I would hate to have a job where you have to wear that all the time. Oh, my God, it would be terrible. Especially on, like, even today, where it's, like, 80s outside, but it's a little humid. It's like, yeah. no. And, like, think about this. All those old photos from back in the day when people would be at Wrigley Field or be at ballparks in the summertime. Yeah. All the men wearing suits. Yeah. Or they, Outrageous. Or, or they took off their, their jacket and they put the jersey on with the collar outside of it. I'm like, ugh. All right. I'm sorry. I just walked over here. Are you guys complaining about being having to wear suits? Yes. We're complaining about... No, I, no I, complaining is not right. We're talking about how much it would suck if you had to wear suits all the time. Yes. Oh. So look at look me. good, man. Lawrence, you know, I look like this every day. I know, but you can look good in a suit, my friend. So, But only when I have to. 
So even in all the time I was at the score, even if I was like, a donut now, just I, see you guys. good. Uh, even in the, all the time I was at score, even when I'd interview for positions like after a shift, before a shift, whatever, even if I was literally just going into interview and then leave, yeah, it was so known that I was going to come in in my regular clothes, change into the dress clothes in the bathroom, do the like knowing Mitch, like a seven to 12 minute interview. Yeah. And then go immediately back into the bathroom and change out of the dress clothes. Like ev- by the end, every interview or it would end with Mitch being like, okay, go back and change into your regular clothes. Now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that makes sense. So what do you think while we're on the topic of suits yeah. about the fact that NBA coaches are now no longer required to wear a suit and tie on the sidelines. And you got guys wearing like golf polos. You got guys wearing you know, like zip, zip up like athletic wear yeah do you are you in favor of giving nba coaches that freedom or are are you someone who's used to watching them patrol the sidelines in suits because that's what it was when we were growing up and you want to go back to that no comfort 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 wins you're gonna at least and now maybe this is more projecting by me but i'm gonna be better at whatever i'm doing when i'm not thinking about what i'm wearing so if, I, so if I have to be wearing a suit or whatever and dealing with that and then and then you get all the looks of like the guys wearing the white or the light colored suits and they got the pit stains and mm-hmm. stuff like just let them actually if anything I think everybody should be required to wear a track suit like Tibbs when he had the you know when he had the business in the front and the party in the back oh the, the young T-Wolves Tibbs yes oh that's one of my favorite pictures ever. <laughs> yes. God, that it's mullet so was him, flawless. Because you know he wore that for three days straight while grinding. Tape. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Not talking to another human being for mm-hmm. days at a time, only watching tape Yeah. in a tracksuit with a kick-ass mullet. Of course. Man, I, I saw him sitting courtside for that bulls Knicks Summer League game while we were there. Yeah. And at one point when the Knicks were up big, I actually saw him smile. I was like, wow, it's, it's so elusive. The Tibbs smile. Yeah. I, I much, I much rather see the, the Tibbs just fury and anger all the time because it's, right. it's, you know, comfortingly familiar. Do you think he's like that at a restaurant? I don't, I, I think he's actually probably just like baseline, no emotion or uh-huh. cordial at a restaurant. Yeah. Not, I don't think he's a dude who's mean to wait staff at restaurants. I think right. he's secretly a nice guy, Yeah, but it's just what he shows that hard shell exterior mm-hmm. is like his NBA. No one mess with me. I'm Tibbs kind right. of thing. But then he lets go of that a little bit when he's just not in the NBA world. Yeah. I'm trying to, th- I'm the only thing I've tried to figure out is if he goes over the top, the other way when he's out in regular and you know, like talking to real people. Yeah of just being like, okay, now I have to be overly nice or just like, even if he's being short, right? just like be incredibly nice, tip well, whatever. I could see that being the thing too. Yeah. Um, la- last thing on NBA attire. <laughs> uh, the reason that I, to this day, really enjoy yeah. when I am dressing up with a suit, suspenders is an accent piece. Yeah. Phil Jackson. I would watch Phil Jackson patrol the sidelines as a young Bulls fan Mm -hmm. and see Phil Jackson and his white button downs, his slacks that were eight feet long and the suspenders and say to myself, that looks like a successful man. And to this day, I'm obsessed with suspenders because of it. You know, for fats have a touch and go relationship with suspenders to where some, including me, feel like wearing suspenders is almost like a sign of conceding. Right. That, if you switch from the belt to suspenders. Yeah, because at that point you're saying, listen, the stomach can't be held in, <laughs> can't be contained in right. any way, shape, or form. So you just have to go with the tarp over the top. Right. Are, are, are you a wire guy, the TV show The Wire? Of course. Landsman. I yes. always think of yes. that. Always, always yes. rocking the suspenders. Yes, and you, anytime you see me, you're like, oh, those suspenders. Those are crying out in agony At right now. At some point, they snap. Yeah, right. You had to. Yeah, like <laughs> that's yeah. The the Jay Landsman is not the best look for fats. Yeah. At least according to me. Now, also, I'm thinking because I would be wearing the the suit jacket for as little time as humanly possible too, because once again, I'm probably going to pit out anyway. Right. Just you know, that's the way the world works. It is. But in in these summer months, oh, guess what? Pit stains gonna happen. Dude, I wore. I wore a different t-shirt here. Yeah. 
and changed right when I parked, even though I have air conditioning in the car. Yeah. Because I didn't want to have anything too obvious on this shirt. Now, mind you, it's a nice black CHGO shirt. CHGO so, locker. Check it out. There you go. <laughs> even though I got the stand blocking me, but whatever. <laughs> Like, that's the thing is, like, I didn't want to do anything to this shirt. So just in the walk from my condo to the parking lot. Yeah. And in the time in the car for the air conditioning to kick on, which my air is, okay, is pretty good. Yeah. I didn't want to risk the shirt. Right. So I'm like, understandable. different shirt there. I'll wear this one home because then I'm done. Yeah. Then I don't need to worry about it anymore. But these are the things we think about. It is. And you know what? I Because you're coming in today, I class it up <laughs> a little bit. I have a T-shirt that has at least partial sleeves to it. My my go to usually in the summer, and our our viewers know this. Yeah, tanks. Yeah, tank tops all day, every day. Yeah, I can't. I can't. That's uh, fats and tanks don't really get along, <laughs> dude. I mean, neither do tanks and scrawny guys with no arms, which is what I am. No shame. Just gotta embrace it for the comfort. It's true. All right, I guess we should talk some bulls now. Yeah, I but guess. you know what? I'm glad that we did that. That was a good catch up. Um, <laughs> I feel like we became the team today. We did. We absolutely did. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome to sit in that chair anytime. Cool. Uh, we will talk about this weird Goran Dragic stuff and how apparently the Bulls are promising him the next amount of minutes coming up next. But first, I mentioned it at the top of the show, today's episode brought to you guys by our great friends at PointsBet. The best way to support CHGO is to download that PointsBet app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. If you do that right now, you're going to get those two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but that's not all. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you will get a free membership. That's right, free membership to CHGO, which unlocks all of our amazing web content by our incredible credentialed reporters across every Chicago sports team. You'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker, and it could be this dope-ass Skyline one that my guy Rick here is rocking right now. That's $2,000 of free bets, free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO merch locker, all for just making a $50 deposit of points bet, and you want to do that anyway because it's fun. It's your home for live in-play betting, and it just got even better. It's your favorite team priming for a comeback. Don't just watch the game. Bet along with it live. More live betting, more live markets, faster live cash outs. Follow along with your bets the moment they hit. Stay in the live action all game long. So what are you waiting for? It's time to elevate your live betting game. Once the game starts, don't just bet. You live your bet life. See, Rick, I, I know I, you're I you're a big betting guy. I am. I was prepared just in case you threw it to me. I'm glad. I, did, I didn't <laughs> want to throw you. I didn't want to throw you. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad that you were there waiting for it. I'm glad that you were there Always waiting prepared. for it. The next time, I'm throwing it at you. Okay. What's So um, what, is NBA your favorite thing to bet on? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's whether it's I've. I started in player props and I've kind of expanded out to now, especially this off season right. uh, with my work that I'm doing over at four for four and bet spurts that I'll, uh, into the futures market a little bit. Okay. It's, it's kind of tough because obviously you're waiting nine, 10 months for those to possibly cash out right. depending yeah. on what it is, unless it's some of these, who's this guy playing for next year, which I've got a few of those in the, in the coffer. So uh, those are set, but yeah, I, I love it because if you grind the sport and just to love the sport, you can make money on it, especially right. in the prop market. So right. like stuff involving the bulls for a while, when Javante green was getting those minutes at the four, mm -hmm. sometimes his props wouldn't reflect just the minutes load he was going to get. Right. So you could maybe hit some overs early. And then once it got adjusted to, okay, you have to constantly be willing to move right. based on what's there for you. But if you love the sport, like I know some people view the the betting stuff as this big taboo thing still. Yeah. But if you love the sport and understand the sport, all betting talk is is talking about the sport, but just framed a little differently. And I don't exactly. think the, I don't think the way that's framed takes away from the sport in and of itself. Because right. I've had times where I've lost bets. Yeah. Uh, but the game was so awesome that I just didn't care. Right. Because I, I love the sport first. Yeah. Especially with basketball. Maybe that's why I love it so much and I and I uh and I grind it as much as I do. Cause I've been spending a decent amount of my time grinding that stuff so far. Yeah. I, dude, I'm the same way. I was never big into sports betting until you know started hosting shows that had sports betting apps or sites as sponsors, and mm -hmm. they were they were just like, Here, sign up for an account, here's some money, go. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, if, if you watch the NBA every day. Or, or if you watch the NFL every Sunday right. and you know who these players are and what they're likely to do, 
it's fun and you do win more often than you lose if you know the sport you're watching right yeah there's it's easier for people really what it is where people have models and all that stuff does it take out some of your your uh your low ends maybe sure right. a little bit but it also limits the time you have to prep but if you're cool with the prep and you like learning and doing the work right then what does it matter like that's kind of how i view nba every day where it's like there might have been times where i was working a show and i also might have been look researching player props who's to say right that could have happened a few times or every day that might have happened during the regular season but you know it all ends up working together because as long as you're on top of the news and you kind of have a basic idea of how every team plays right there's ways to win and that could be nba that could be any other sport uh jason davis saying let's talk about clint capella player props oh that's that's my dude him and, him <laughs> that's and I jam. Talk, yeah him and i talked throughout the year that was like he focuses on a few and like capella rebounds was always his thing he'd ask me about really so also loyal i'm fat podcast listeners so. there you go shout out to him uh today's episode also brought to you guys by a new sponsor our newest sponsor here at chgo mm. it's the merch site foco Chicago sports fans, your home for the best Chicago sports coverage, that's us, CHGO, is partnering with a leader in sports merch and collectibles. CHGO is teamed up with FOCO to secure your access to the best collectibles and gear around, whether it's Bears, Cubs, Sox, Hawks, Bulls. FOCO will have something for you, your kid, your friend, uh, you know, your, your, your pet fish, whoever. Looking to get some new gear, collectibles, or accessories? FOCO has officially licensed gear for adults and kids with everything from bobbleheads to swimsuits to Crocs. I was sifting the Bears gear they have on FOCO's site earlier today. Endless. Anything you could possibly imagine. Gear, uh, you know, uh, accessories, footwear, swimsuits, camping gear, home accessories, office accessories. Endless. So, FOCO has you covered with the best Chicago merch of your favorite teams. Head on over to FOCO.com. That's F-O-C-O dot com. And use promo code C-H-G-O at checkout, and you'll get 10% off all non-presale items. That's promo code C-H-G-O at FOCO.com for 10% off. Check it out. It's a dope-ass merch site. All right. So, oh, Rick... <laughs> All right, let's let's start with this. Okay. What did you think of the Goran Dragic edition when that news dropped a week or so ago? My initial thought was it's interesting, but not totally shocking because around the deadline, they were one of the teams that was thought of that he could have signed with once he got bought out. So or or got traded for whatever. That that was a thought that could happen. So I'm like, okay, you get it with the connection with Vooch. Fine guy more or less be some insurance right but it was as things progress that it's like well then you look at okay well io developed pretty well so then you have dale and terry the first round pick who's you know more likely than not going to be considered a guard more of a wing and not a one but in the backcourt mix right so i don't know where his minutes were going to come from but Interesting you say that. Yeah, yeah because, now, now things have changed a little bit. Like early hours this morning, this started going around on Bulls Twitter. Uh, Joey, do you have the, the graphic, the snapshot of this tweet? So this started originally from an interview Dragic did with a Serbian newspaper called Vicer, Vacer, maybe it's a Vecer, I don't know, V-E-C-E-R. Uh, and Matej Sport Info here on Twitter translated some of the quotes from Dragic in that article from that Serbian newspaper saying, we were in talks in Dallas. They made an offer, but I decided not to take it. They wanted me to play one game and then sit for the next five. I know I can still easily play 20 minutes per game. I'm not ready to retire and just sit on the bench in a cheerleading role. Then there was this from Matej Sport Info. Dragic also said that the Bulls guaranteed 20 to 25 minutes off the bench, backing up Lonzo at point guard. That's the type of bench role he wanted to have in Dallas. Why the Mavs weren't willing to offer that to Dragic is still a mystery. They won't get a better point guard for a vet men. Okay, what do we make of this? Because as you said, if you look at this rotation of back uh, backcourt guys on this roster coming into the next season, you got Lonzo and Zach, and we'll circle back to Lonzo, I'm sure. You got Io, 
who just made second team all rookie and looked mm -hmm. at at certain stretches of the season to be a pretty darn good backup point guard. Yeah, and most years he's a first team all rookie. It's just that right. like this rookie class was Stats. so good. Exactly. That I mean, he even yeah, like it, it was a really good rookie class. So being second team is no no short shrift to him. Right. And people didn't expect that. And look, it was because he was right. called upon when the Bulls were shorthanded. Mm -hmm. Then you also got this guy named Alice Caruso, who's one of your best perimeter defenders yeah. and going to play real minutes. He's getting paid well to be here as a role player. If he's healthy, he will play and play a lot of minutes. He did an interview recently talking about how he's been working on his body in the offseason to make it more able to play extended minutes and as close to 82 games as possible. Is he working on the shot? So too? as you're starting to do this, then you just, you know, you get to your second hand counting backcourt guys and right. you're like, wait, so how is it that they pitched to Dragic guaranteed 20 to 25 minutes a night? Unless it is yeah. hedging, right? I, I think, it, yeah, it's definitely seems like it's a hedge against issues with Lonzo Ball. And we heard from Billy Donovan. We heard from Arturis Karnaschovas. Like, Lonzo is a straight-up question mark. To think, to bank on him being ready for training camp, clearly the Bulls aren't, and neither should you. If, if Even if you're an actions-over-words person, look at what they've done this offseason. Like, the Andre Drummond signing's irrelevant. That's obviously just they need a backup center. Fine. But you look at Dragic, you look at Dale and Terry, and I don't think they would have made their first round pick just for this year. And obviously, if they were making a pick for this year, it wouldn't have been him. Right. But in terms of skill set, Dragic can run a team okay. He can at least be an adult and, and get the Bulls into sets. He can do that. Defensively, not so much. That's going to be a problem for him. So having him, Levine, and DeRozan on the court at the same time, could get a little rough defensively. Dale and Terry is someone that as he grows, as he matures, maybe spends some time in the G League or gets, you know, a few minutes here and there is someone who can handle, seems like he's a really good passer with good vision and he can play some defense. So you could see that being someone that maybe more down the road could fill some of those skills that Lonzo has in the backcourt and also just his size plays to that as well. So it really seems like this offseason, while there wasn't a ton to do in terms of what they were able to do, unless we were talking big trades or whatever, this was a fill some holes while also hedge on Lonzo. So if you're banking on anything at this point in your projection of the Bulls with Lonzo Ball, I would just be leery because I'm now not expecting him ready for training camp. No inside info or anything like that. Just reading the old tea leaves like everybody else. Yeah. I'm not even sold that he's going to be ready for the start of the year. Like, I'm not banking on anything from him at this point. Yeah. And so, you know, Dave and I were talking about that a little bit on yesterday's show. Like, we heard from Billy Donovan in their first summer league game when he was doing a sideline interview on the broadcast. And then we heard AK doing the same style interview in their game yesterday out in Vegas. And they each said the same thing. It was like, he's progressing but he's not as progressing as quickly as we would want or hope. That, to me, is a, a big old red flag, and I, I'm with you. I do not I've, – I've seen some Bulls fans saying, like, dude, relax. We're just barely halfway through July. Training camp is still two months away. I get that. None of this sounds promising, and I'm with you in that I would not be surprised if he is not ready for game one. And then you yeah. and then then you have to start thinking about okay well can they can they make do without Lonzo for the first however many games of the season and then that just becomes a, an even more dangerous game of well if he's not ready at the start of the season will he ever be ready right. because whatever this is the combination of the arthroscopic knee and the bone bruise was months ago now mm -hmm. and he's been trying to rehab and trying to ramp up at several different times and everything we're hearing from within the Bulls organization is it's not going so great. So I don't feel I don't feel good about that. No, and, nor should you. And honestly, the, look, I don't know if this is Dragic's side of the story with this guaranteed twenty to twenty five minutes, right. and if that's something the Bulls actually did pitch to him and promise him as part of this offer. I guaranteeing guys minutes is a weird dicey thing to do when you're talking about free agency pitches. 
when the Bulls' backcourt is as crowded as it is. Also, his comment about what Dallas was expecting from him and asking of him, uh, you know, you're going to get minutes maybe one out of every five games. That's kind of ideally what I think Dragic has left in the tank at this point, right? Like, if the Bulls are asking him to play 20 to 25 a night, I think that that's too much. Yeah, maybe not one out of every five or something like that, but if it's every other, yeah, every third, yeah, something like that. But if we're talking about, if, if we're going to live in the hypothetical at the moment, Alonzo does not start the season healthy. At that point, I think you still have to have Dragic be the backup point guard. At that point, you're probably, if I'm the Bulls, I'm what, probably starting Io at point guard. I wouldn't want to start Kobe White necessarily because then again, your defense is too flammable. Right. The but, other option would be Caruso. Yeah. Or you just start Caruso. But it's going to be interesting to see how they value the second unit in that regard to determine does Caruso start or does Io start? Because you could really do it either way. If you want to prop up that second unit and try and make sure you're not losing a lot of those minutes when, I mean, even if you want to take Vooch out of the equation of you either Levine or DeRozan are on the floor, yeah, then maybe you save Caruso for the second unit in that regard. And you basically just try and out defense, right. <laughs> whoever, whoever you're playing that given night and you throw IO in the starting lineup, knowing that he's comfortable playing that role, taking the step back, understanding what his job is and doing that. And basically just kind of, that's where your value is this year in IO, at least while you're waiting for Lonzo to get squared away. Uh, dupes in the comments saying with how slow this is healing in six months, we're going to find out, uh, that LeVar ball has been having them do some homeopathic BS, <laughs> like injecting Lonzo's knee with essential oils. <laughs> do you have the Tom Brady sphere? Oh my God. <laughs> well, and I mean, you got to take LeVar at his word because if we, if you recall, he said Le that, that Zach was going to, to, to the Lakers. Oh yeah. And of course that's where Zach is, right? Right. He went to the Lakers. That was one of the dumbest. I mean, I get that for one thing, I'm not mad at like Zach's people for doing, for treating this how they did because it's the clutch playbook. Right. I've been saying it's like the FBI and Die Hard. Yeah. You know exactly what the playbook is. They're going to run it to a T. Shout out Reginald Bell Johnson. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Theo, you want a miracle? I bring you the FBI. <laughs> Like that's, that's what it was is choppers up the ass, right? <laughs> like that, that's what it ends up being is like, okay, he's, he's going to be fairly vague in his comments. You know, you're going to see maybe, maybe things are taken off of social media. You know, there, there's going to be all the pressure put on the bulls to, even if it was the number was always going to be there. Mm -hmm. The, you know, maybe it's a player option. Maybe it just get all the little, all the trimmings for a contract. That's right. all that was for. Um, along these lines, I've seen people in the comments, including Joker, talking about Kobe White and fitting into this. You mentioned him with saying, well, if you start Kobe, then you're doing your defense a real disservice and uh, saying, you know, Kobe's probably uh, on his way out with a trade. And then that at least makes Dragic's presence here a bit more logical. But what we heard coming up to the draft and then immediately following is that the Bulls were making calls and receiving calls about Kobe White because everybody's kind of seen that the writing's on the wall with him, no rookie mm -hmm. extension on his last year, but that the Bulls were not hearing any offers that they thought were good enough for Kobe White, that maybe they were even looking for not just a player, a good young player at, to swap or a pick, but both of those things. I think that's too much of an ask for Kobe White and what we've seen from him. An inconsistent, streaky shooter and, you know, rim rim attacker and a guy who's a real problem on defense. That's that's not a player you're hauling, you're forking over a pick and a player for right no. now in this, in this NBA market. The other wrinkle of that that I think is fascinating, Rick, and I want to know what you think is, in this carousel of all of these guards, some of them are combos, some of them are point guards, some of them are two guards, in Billy's rotation... Where do you prioritize playing Kobe so that his trade value is more than what it is now, so that it is a non-zero value versus winning games? Like, how do you how do you stack up those priorities? I think that's why a deal's 
still likely to happen. I think at some point they're just going to be like getting minutes for other guys is more important than boosting his trade value. And at this point, get what you can get. Yeah. Because obviously if the bulls want to get in on that and mind you, I'm not saying they're going to get anything great pick wise, but even if it is just a pick, just get something so that you have something else to throw into a deal because the bulls are short on assets. I mean, they traded stuff to get decent. They traded a good amount of stuff, probably hoping there wouldn't be a superstar that would even have a thought of going to the bulls until they had more pick equity back. Well, I mean, obviously if Rudy Gobert went for X, like we started with and Kevin Durant was a thing, like people ever bringing up the bulls was never going to happen just because they're asking for all the picks, you all what, of the picks you know what, and talented players. Yes, and you yeah. know what the bulls don't have all the picks. Mm-mm. You and got 23 going to Orlando to complete right. that trade. You got 25 going out the door to yep. San Antonio and the DeMar sign and trade. Right. So you could trade like 27, 27 29. 29. That's yeah. all you got right and, now. And swap your others. Yeah. Like, okay. And, and the Portland pick and the, Portland which pick. maybe with some of their off season moves is actually going to look like a more valuable yeah. pick that will actually translate because they're going to be better, but they're still going to be the West is, you so know, stacked, man. nowhere near the top of the West, no. which is what the, which is what bulls want right now. They want Portland to be good enough to get back into the playoffs out West. Yes. But not so good that that pick still has some value. That's yeah. I'm, I'm still skeptical about Portland making the playoffs. They might make the play in, but I don't know about actually making the playoffs at that point. I guess though, it's a couple one game scenarios. So who the hell knows? Right. Yeah. But it, like, it's possible, but if you don't get that again this year, also, I bet Portland wants that to convey too, so they can ha- have more control of their own draft. Yeah. Cause that thing's basically lottery protected into perpetuity. Right. I think till like 2028 yeah. or something crazy. Yeah. So I'm sure they would like to have more flexibility over their own picks without having to like loosen protections to the bulls. Right. So that they can then trade for more stuff to put around Dame Lillard and Jeremy Grant and Anthony Simons. Like you're telling me that's a no doubt playoff team. Yeah. No. It, it was crazy to see that Jeremy Grant trade go down and you'd be like, wow, that's, that's all it took. Yeah. Because Bulls fans were obsessed with the idea of trading for Jeremy Grant about a year ago, if you recall. Oh, I recall. And I I don't know about (laughs) you. I was never a fan of that idea. I thought that Jeremy Grant is kind of overrated. He's not as good of a wing defender as a lot of Bulls fans were making him out to be. Yeah. Um, And that based on what Jeremy Grant wanted to be, coming to Chicago would not at all be the role that he was hoping for. Because he went to Detroit. Detroit! Because he wanted to be the guy. And it turns out he is good, but mm-hmm. not good enough to be the guy. And Detroit was, he was the best player on a dog shit team. Right. And, and the other part of that is Denver offered the same money. Yeah. It's not even like Detroit was like, we need someone to be the best player to get us through our tank. No. Like they, he was offered the same money to play his role in, in Denver and was like, no, I want to see what else I can do. And like, I kind of respect it. I respect the being like, I think my skills allow me to do more. I've been working on more. Cool. I got you. But yeah. uh, but he's if he's a top two or maybe even a three option, yeah, then that that's gonna be problematic. But one thing I will say now, you know who's closer to a championship in the Bulls? The Pistons. Don't say, uh, I knew you were gonna say that. I didn't want you to, though. Am I wrong? You I mean, might I, not be, but that that is a nice core of young, yeah, talented players like, they have now. Like K, I would take Cade over if if it was. Hey, trade Zach Levine straight up for Cade Cunningham. Heartbeat done. Really? Yes. Uh, is that is that is that too mean for CHGO? It Bulls? might be. It might. Be. You just broke my heart with that thought. It, am I? Am I? Am I wrong? Yeah, you know what? Yes, you are wrong. Okay. You know why? Huh. Because they're the Pistons and they will find a way to screw it up. Oh, I don't doubt that. Can they can they resign Jason Maxiel again? <laughs> <laughs> what about what about an aging Allen Iverson? How about oh. that? Is that a good idea? <laughs> I mean, we're not who are we to talk? We gave we gave right. a decrepit Dwayne Wade fifty million dollars yeah. to do yeah. absolutely nothing. Oh man, remember when I don't know, I forget what I think it might have been no, clearly it wasn't the anniversary. Something made me think of John Salmons recently. Oh, 
Dude, I, I saw a Salmon jersey in Vegas. Really? Yeah, I can't remember wh- one of the games. One of the games at UNLV Stadium, Yeah, I saw a dude one row in front of me wearing it, rocking a Salmon's jersey. I love Salmon's. And then my mind, because apparently I hate myself, went to, remember the Kings game where they blew the 35-point lead? Because <laughs> I forgot in that wow. game which team Salmon's was on. Yeah, yeah. It was like him and Noach were yep. both the guys that were involved in that game. But I think Noach was on the Kings at that point. I think you're right. Yeah. Which Man. was weird to see. Boy, I, yeah. boy, I'm and just, it was, I'm and just it was, Debbie Downer over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, in Old Buckner's wah, in the comments saying, wah. Pistons love, I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, more people in the comments confused by this Goran Dragic being guaranteed 20 to 25 minutes a night by the Bulls. I, yeah. Again, that it could be multiple reasons. It are the Bulls trying to already prepare for the fact that they won't have Lonzo at the start of the season, right? And that if and when he comes back, he could be out the very next day because whatever's going on with his knee is not right. And will they swap Kobe White at some point between now and that you know February twenty three trade deadline? because they do not see Kobe as a long-term piece. Mm-hmm. I, I did think it was kind of like awkward. Like it was great to see so many bulls show out for their first summer league game yeah. in Vegas. DeMar was there. Lonzo was there. Pat was there. Javante was there. Kobe was there. And I I was like, okay. Then I was like, oh, Kobe's here. Hmm. Cause like in my mind <laughs> already gone, <laughs> yep. I'm wearing a Kobe white shirt today. Yeah. He's, he's already gone. Yeah. It's weird. They got to figure something out or they're just going to play really small again, especially with their second unit. Yeah. Maybe that ends up being it where it's something like something like Dragic white and Caruso's essentially your three, which happened, which again, starts to take away some of the point of Alex Caruso because he's so good defensively and physical for a guard. When you start to get guys that are that much bigger than him, that, that physicality doesn't become as much of a strength as a necessity right just to be able to 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 be able to stand up at that point so yeah being able to keep caruso at guard or at least let him kind of based on who you're playing do some matchup stuff because obviously he uh you know he filled the old arch role at times of guarding Giannis, so that that definitely happened right yeah because i figured i couldn't get through this uh if you hated the piston stuff just wait till i make jim boylan references oh dude hey <laughs> Where, where's our neuralizer? Ah, uh, Dave's not here, so we don't have it ready. That is, those are two. You cannot say that name. That's, no, no, that's like he who must not be named Harry Potter kind of stuff. Okay, so if I that is not a name that is allowed on this set. Okay, so if I was to break two rules at once, would that be a double lose? Oh my God, Rick. <laughs> Uh, Rick, some people just like to watch the world burn we were having a nice time we were we were talking about nobody suits and was making any references to the bald-headed menace <laughs> and then you just had to go and ruin it well we talked about jordan this before is, yeah we did yeah, it was we talked a, about a ball it was like you know it was a great uh catching up yeah we haven't chatted bulls in a while no we haven't it was fun it was great yeah. We were gonna. We were just gonna make a nice, easy, soft landing in the final ten minutes of the episode, nope. and you fucking ruined it. You know what I did with your chip to keep, boiling to BS. Keep, there we Thank go. you, Joey. Yes. You know what I did? I turned it into Die Hard Two, Ugh. which all, by the way, almost as bad as the Jim Boylan era. Man, for real. Die Hard Two. Is Die Hard so Two bad. is like borderline unwatchable. Yeah. With, with a vengeance, great. Great. With a vengeance, great. Two even so honestly bad. give give me die hard four over die hard two yeah. live for your die hard yes. with justin long yes way better than die hard two right like yeah so like why why does our main antagonist in that have to be like naked doing yoga and that's our introduction to him opening for opening one, scene right like for one thing it's like i get it you're ripped get out of my face good for you yeah but why like makes no I, sense maybe this is just a me thing yeah. i'm not rolling around my condo naked even when i'm by myself i don't want to see that would you no one else should would no you be doing that either. if you were doing the yoga though no. still still probably no no yeah no no i'm I'm not a wanderer around my my house naked guy no I never I, I don't even i'm not a sleep naked guy either no just not one of my things one of the many reasons why i die hard too just just rife rifle of problems right 
Um, and I like the trying to transition back with the comments of trade Kobe for a power forward. <laughs> Also, don't I also, sleep naked. I also saw someone in the comments just say, uh, "How about how about Kobe White for Donovan Mitchell?" Sure, done, yeah, done yeah. deal. Who right. says no? Nobody says no. Let's go. Right. Uh, today's episode <laughs> is also brought to you guys by Owen, and I have to tell you about him for a minute. Owen, which stands for Only What You Need, O W I N, is a 100% plant-based protein shake that gives you nutrition that works as hard as you do. All of their products are free of artificial ingredients, allergen-friendly, no gluten or dairy, and easily digestible. And you know who we heard about Owen from? Because it's QB1 of the Chicago Bears, Justin Fields, who uses Owen as part of following his plant-based diet. Not for me, but for a lot of people, it's something that works. Owen and CHO have partnered up to give you an awesome offer. You can get 20% off your first purchase at liveowen.com. That's L-I-V-E-O-W-Y-N.com with the promo code CHGO20. That's CHGO20. Join Justin Fields, QB1. Woo! And try Owen. Only what you need. You a plant-based diet guy, Rick? Uh, shockingly enough, I haven't been to this point. Same. That's why I like you. Mm -hmm. you're I, I'm, I'm burgers and fries guy I'm, yeah. I'm a steak and potatoes guy yep yesterday i may have had a brisket sandwich and onion rings for i lunch. love that yes i love that real quick yeah do you have can you immediately recall your favorite episode of the i'm fat pod with jay like favorite food that you've talked about favorite oh, episode wow it's so funny because i'm sure you can relate to this now when you're doing episodes and we only do an episode once a week when you start churning through episodes, they all either blend together or like the second it's over, you totally forget what you were talking about. Like someone would be like, oh, what'd you talk True. about yesterday? No idea. True. Honestly, <laughs> no idea. Um, I think the first time we did the March fatness bracket was pretty great. Yeah. That was probably my favorite because it was something that we had just thought up and having it come to fruition and people love it the way they I've, did. I very much enjoyed it. <laughs> and then getting some of the celebrities we've had involved with it too. Yeah. Like we had former Simpsons showrunner and now like big time fast food dude, Bill Oakley. Mm -hmm. We had Bobby Jenks do a bracket. One oh, that's year. awesome. Like, come on. It doesn't get any better than that. Like we're, you know, like we're doing a podcast about food and being fat. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think actually maybe my favorite, it was one of the really early ones was when I described the, um, the ultimate combo meal of getting one item from each fast food joint that you like to create your ultimate combo meal. Cause oh, when I, I was living in Geneva, that. yeah, there were like three different places more or less within the same parking lot Yeah, that it's like, I would get. At the time, I think it was the spicy chicken from Wendy's, the fries from this place called Skippy's, and then there was a place that I would get a shake from, too. I like that. And I've I've always been a fan of visiting the KFC slash Taco Bell two-in-ones. Yes. Yep. Back back when uh, KFC had those double-down sandwiches. Yes. The infamous double-downs. <laughs> yes, I love I would get double a double-down down and a cheesy gordita crunch, and it's the best meal I've ever had in my life. That's it. Cheesy, cheesy gordita crunch. Dude. That is, the, oh. The pinnacle. I, I say this on the I'm Fat podcast, so I'm going to abuse your guys' platform as well. To Please do. Taco Bell. Bring back the goddamn caramel apple empanada. It was the best item at Taco Bell. If I want dessert to go with my three cheesy gordita crunches or two, if I'm feeling a little full going in there, I want the caramel apple empanada. It's like getting the apple pie from McDonald's, except you get more of a crunch on the outside with the sugar. Yeah. I, I don't understand taking that off the menu. Now all you have our goddamn cinnamon twists, please. Which are which are garbage, by the way. Right. This is the most basic, generic dessert menu item. No, they're garbage. Right. Cinnamon twists. <laughs> Thank the, you. A caramel apple empanada was a gift. And you know what you've done? You've taken away the gift. Be better, Taco Bell. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes Taco Bell just needs to to look at what they're doing and make some corrections. Um, all right. With, with a few minutes we have left, I still see people in the comments arguing about the, the usage and the efficacy of Kobe white coming into this season. Somebody here, I think Colin saying 
Hot take, Kobe averages 18 points per game. That is a hot take. Yikes. I mean, Carlos saying Bulls need three points shooting, so Kobe has to stick around I mean, for now. To be fair, inflation, though. Yeah. So 18 points. Uh, what does that really mean? 13? <laughs> what, what do you make about that, though, in that Bulls fans who are disappointed with their underwhelming free agency this summer – when it came to addressing the team's desperate need of three-point shooting. That is why they lost the Bucks series. It's why Lonzo's you know, status in the, uh, being up in the air is such a worry because he was their most efficient and highest volume three-point shooter this past season. Yep. Even Kobe being streaky is their like second most reliable three-point shooter coming into this season if Lonzo is not healthy. Are you disappointed, and do you think they should have done more to address that in free agency? I wish they would have done more, but... I don't necessarily know who that would have been because the thing is too, the Bulls had a lot of issues they needed to fill and clearly they prioritized defense and passing. Mm -hmm. That's what they prioritized overall. And basically we're like, we can make this work as long as, and this is something else that they can do offensively. If they can be good about, uh, about being consistent with their ball movement, even when DeMar's isoing, you can't be just standing around every possession. Like that was one of one of the few negatives. Uh, well, well, I guess one of the many negatives towards the end of the year. But when DeMar would really try and get in his bag, everybody got to a point where they would just stand and watch. Yeah. You can't do that when you're not shooting the ball well because you have to create more open space somehow. And if they're not going to respect your shot, then it has to be with ball movement. So that's something that they were pretty good at early in the year. But as the year progressed, really fell off a cliff. And I know that was something on post game shows. Bill Wennington and I would talk about almost every night of just like, just somebody move. Like if you want to go back to the early 2010s, like just think something simple. Think about what Ronnie Brewer was doing. Yeah. Like that was the only purpose he served on offense. He wasn't going to hit a three for you. Certainly he, not. He would stand in the dunker spot and be able to duck in and have the field to do that. The Bulls have guys that are good cutters. Zach Levine is a very good cutter. Dale and Terry shown some, you know, in summer league has shown a little bit when he's been off ball, especially last game of understanding when to cut. Right. Like Alex Caruso, mm -hmm. decent cutter. Like those are some guys that get them moving off the ball and may, and hopefully other guys see that. And then when one person moves, everyone else has to move to keep the spacing going. That's what you have to do when you're a team that doesn't have a whole lot of shooters. And that's just not what the bulls are right now. Yeah. Um, Adam in the comments pointing out that Dragic's three point percentage last year seems like an outlier based on just 21 games yeah. over those two teams. Do we really expect it to continue? I mean, if Dragic can go back to being a reliable three point shooter, then that helps you a little bit. Sure. But again, and this all goes back to this original part of today's show of, are we really expecting Dragic to be out there 20 to 25 minutes per game, every game? Does he have the health to do that anymore? Because he looked kind of washed. And as we're talking about Kobe White being a valuable three-point shooting asset that you might not be ready to trade yet, but oh dear God, his defense. Did you <laughs> see Dragic try to guard people last season? It's not great, friends. Woof. <laughs> it's Woof. So, you, so that presents the exact same problem. Right. And that's part of the thing with the Bulls is what they needed more than anything else. Yes, they needed shooting. You know what they needed? Two-way players. And it's so ding, tough. Ding, to, ding. It's so tough to find those. That's part of the reason that I think they went with someone like Dalen Terry because while he has his negatives, like his shot is sketchy, but he has a role on offense and a role on defense, and he can fill both adequately well. Maybe not from Jump Street. Like he'll probably he'll probably not be in the rotation to start the year. I'd be surprised if he was. Right. And that it's not necessarily a bad thing if he is, but that's something to keep in mind of just. That's an attempt to be like we have and they need to develop some sort of skill in these guys where if you're not picking, if you chose, we're not going to be picking high. Right. You have to be able to develop dudes. So that's on the players, the coaching staff, the structure of the organization as well. Uh, Daddy Fish with our last comment of the day saying they could train Dale and Terry's shot and his handle. Well, you better get started because yeah. you need a lot of work in both of those yes, categories. You do. <laughs> Yikes. Um, Thank you for thank you for coming by, Rick. It was Thanks awesome to have me. you in studio. I feel like we covered a lot of ground. We really we, did. we talked dynasty. We talked fashion. Yes. We talked Goran Dragic getting a guarantee on minutes and free agency. Yep. We talked other Bulls offseason stuff. Yes. And uh, and we talked a little bit of fast food and a little bit of dining. Right. Is this the growth plate? It is. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> he snuck in one more. He snuck in one more. That bastard. And you were you were had a positive reaction I initially did. to I it. I didn't realize that the you record snuck one more show. in there until after the fact. <laughs> uh, everybody, follow Rick on Twitter if you aren't already at Rick C Camp. Get some of his betting insights, which is what he's been doing recently and doing a great job at it. Plus, check out the I'm Fat Pod he does with our Hawks guy, Jay Zawoski, here. If you haven't, it's fantastic and a great listen. And if you are a foodie, uh, and, and a particularly a not looking to eat super healthy foodie like me, like Rick yeah. here, it's right up your alley. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Pack. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. Subscribe to our CHGO Sports YouTube channel if you aren't already. Hit that thumbs up button under today's show if you liked it. Helps us out a lot. We appreciate it. For Rick and our production team, Joey and Lawrence and everybody here at CHGO, saying until next time, appreciate you, Bulls Nation. See Red, be good.